Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will be talking about Backendless Hive, a new data storage system we recently released in Backendless. It is available in uh, all Backendless clusters, all installations provided by Backendless. And uh, uh, I'd like to give you an overview of what Hive is about and give you a few ideas of how Hive can be used in your applications. There will be a few additional videos that I'm uh, working on to uh, describe some specific use cases and demonstrate how uh, Hive can uh, help out with various scenarios in those applications. So Hive as a system is very easy to understand because it is based on one uh, principle for storing data. And that principle is uh, any data is stored as a key value pair. So for any data that you put into Hive, you assign a key, which is a, a name, uh, that uh, identifies that uh, data element. And as far as the data, it can be anything. It really is any supported JSON type, if you use REST, or any uh, specific uh, data type in your application. So if you, work, if you work with JavaScript, it can be any JavaScript type. So in there, you have uh, primitives uh, such as strings, numbers, dates. You can store arrays, you can store objects, you can store anything as a, as a one uh, value element. But uh, at a high level, it is key value. Now, what's cool about Hive is it supports different data types. So those key value pairs they can be categorized in different storage types that we call buckets. And uh, there are five different storage types or buckets that Hive supports. And uh, specifically, they are basic key value. Well, everything is key value, but key value is really just one key, one value. Uh, there is a set where one key may have a set of data. Uh, list, which is uh, similar to set, but we'll just I'll describe what the differences are. There is a map where one key may contain a collection of uh, data items, and there is a sorted set. So uh, this may not be very descriptive, but I'll I'll start drilling down further. So let's talk about the first one, which is a, a key value. So here uh, you see that there is a key that is, uh, for instance, uh, the name of that key is API key. And the value is, uh, in this case, it is a JSON object that uh, becomes the value. So, so here you can retrieve that value using an API call, and you will get the value that corresponds to that key. Uh, set uh, is, uh, uh, once again, key value. In this case, in this example, I have the key, uh, the name of the key is countries. And the values, uh, the value for that key is a collection of individual values. And then in this case, I have values as the name of the countries. Uh, set is uh, interesting because it does not support duplicates. So whenever you, uh, if you were to insert an additional value into the countries key value pair, uh, if uh, that value already exists, it will be discarded because it is already in the set. So that set is gonna be a collection of values mapped to one key where those values cannot be duplicated. And if you insert, try to insert a duplicate value, it will be ignored because uh, one is already in there. Now, list is similar to set, but it allows duplicates. So here you see that uh, the value of Kate is duplicated and uh, it is part of the actual value collection that is assigned to, to the key. So here the key name is game winners. And as you can see, those are uh, specific values that are assigned to that key. Now here again, values in this case are strings, but you could have objects, you could have arrays, you could have dates, you can have numbers, you can have anything. And they can be of different types. So uh, for uh, a specific key, you may have values that are combination of strings, numbers, objects, and so on. With list, every single value that you have in that uh, list has its own index. So, And there is an API where you can say, give me the first one or last one or uh, values from indexes of one to four, for instance, and uh, uh, you can identify a specific index. And uh, the API provides a bunch of different operations for uh, working with specific values in the list. Next one is a map. So map is more complex where for a single key, you have a value that consists of 
multiple key values. So that becomes more complicated, as you can see. And in this case, I can say, well, give me the value for the key cities. And then what I'm going to get back is, in this case, three different values. And then in this case, the key, individual key in the value is going to be the name of the city, as I configured it. And here we have Dallas, Chicago, and New York. And then the value is the population size in the corresponding cities. And, uh, uh, and once again, the individual values, they are key value pairs. So here you have kind of a, a more of a, a hierarchy where you have key value at the high level, and in this case cities, and then the value is the collection of those. And then individual values that are in the value are also key value pairs. Next one is a, oh, here's an, another example of, uh, of using map where uh, the first one was cities and I had a, a collection of cities, but you do not, you could use it for different purposes where, for instance, another example that I have here is a key is a country and then the value are individual properties of that country. So here I have the country USA, there is a capital and there is a size uh, as far as the population and those are individual values assigned to that specific key. And, and I, again, there are APIs to work on individual values here. Now, sorted set is a, another data storage bucket that Hive supports. And again, there is a key value at the high level. In this example, I have key as cities. And the value consists of multiple values. Now, what's interesting with sorted set is that every single value inside of the actual value at the high level has its own score. And that score is essentially a number and sorted set automatically sorts the values in for a specific key uh, according to the score and this is a perfect for building something like leaderboards and then the sorting is completely automatic uh, where for instance if we need to in this case uh, the, the score is the size again population size for the for the cities so if we need to insert and uh, or add a new city to this to this sorted set for instance it's going to be los angeles and the score is the population size of los angeles 3.85 million people uh, once we add los angeles to that to the cities key value sorted set then what's going to happen is it will automatically insert it in the right position where uh, the values are organized according to score and uh, as you can see for something like leaderboard it would be perfect because you add a new let's say player in the game with the score that they have the sorted set will automatically Organize, the, uh, organize it according to the score, and then you can retrieve the values from uh, for that key. S Hive stores data in memory. As a result, it is blazingly fast. So, for instance, if for a database request, you could get data in, for instance, 500 or 600 milliseconds per request. With Hive, it's going to be less than 100 milliseconds. Uh, in uh, another video that I'm preparing, uh, you will see that I'm fetching a data of 100 objects from Hive, and it takes about 70 milliseconds to fetch all that data. So uh, that's pretty much it at the highest level. Uh, it's uh, what's what you should remember. It's a key value store. Every key has its value. Actual values of, of what's supported in Hive, they depend on the bucket that you're using. There are five different bucket types. The API makes it fairly clear of, uh, to, distinct, to distinguish between different bucket types. Uh, Hive is uh, supported in Codeless, both for the client side in UI Builder and uh, uh, the backend in cloud code, you can use Hive. It is now implemented in JavaScript. There is REST API. We are working on adding uh, APIs in our Android SDK, .NET, uh, Flutter, and iOS is also supported. So at this point, it's JavaScript, uh, iOS, Codeless, and REST. And Android and Flutter and .NET are coming very soon. That's all uh, I wanted to share at this point. Uh, it is. It can get fairly complex and very interesting, uh, and uh, it's. It really opens up a lot of opportunities for making things much much easier. Uh, as far as the use cases, uh, for instance, caching uh, can be done uh, quite efficiently with Hive. You can use it for leaderboards, like so for instance, Sorted Set is great for for that purpose. Uh, implementing something like um, throttling and rate limits and there is an example that I'm preparing 
to for that to uh, to demonstrate how rate, rate limits can be implemented. There is going to be a video for that. So, um, and one other thing that I wanted to mention, every single value in Hive, you can assign an expiration time of when it should be expiring. So you could have data that automatically goes away whenever it's not needed. So if, if any specific value needs to stay around for a certain time, like for, for instance with rate limits, you will see that comes into play, it becomes very handy. Uh, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I'm sure you will have some questions. Please uh, ask away on our support forum. We'll be more than happy to assist you. And I really can't wait to, to see the kind of things that you'll be building with Hive. Thank you. And as always, happy coding.